Good morning, friends. I am Srijit Pillai. Welcome to the Genius Channel on YouTube. And uh, today I am here to take forward my Indian puppetry series. So in my last video, uh, in the part one video of Indian puppetry, I had discussed about string puppetry as well as uh, glove puppetry. So today I'm going to discuss about in my second uh, video or the second part of my Indian puppetry. I'm going to discuss about rod puppetry and shadow puppetry. So as I promised in my first video that I would be back soon with the second video. So here I am going to take rod puppetry and shadow puppetry today. I never thought I could make it, uh, I could be back so soon, but yes. So let's continue without wasting much time. Let's continue, let's start with rod puppetry and Shadow puppetry. So, as you know, my format, uh, let's have an overview of what we are going to take today. So, first thing is rod puppetry. Under rod puppetry, we are going to take three types of puppetry putul notch. It's not notch actually, it's notch, but I don't know why CCIT mentions it as notch, but it's putul notch of uh, notch means dance of uh, West Bengal. Then uh, we have a unique name here, Yampuri of Bihar. Then there is one, Kathi Kundai Nach of Odisha. Uh, let me tell you that Kathi Kundai Nacha of Odisha is not mentioned um, very exclusively in CCRT, but I had to research for other uh, sources uh, to get this part of information. So I hope this helps you in your preparation. Let, next, we have Shadow Puppetry. Under Shadow Puppetry, you can find three names here Togulu Bombayat of Karnataka, Tulu Bombayat of Andhra Pradesh, and Ravana Chaya of uh, Odisha. But let me tell you that uh, Togalu and Tolu, both or Togal or Tol, both means leather. So shadow puppetry, you can uh, very well guess it that the material from which the puppets are prepared would be leather. Uh, then we are discussing something else, uh, which uh, from a mains point of view, so UPSC main students can make use of these slides. Indian puppetry, the causes of decline as well as the steps to revive. What are the steps that can be taken for its revival? So these are the things uh, UPC means please watch out for these things. And then there are certain additional information that I have provided here. So let's uh, get into this. Before that, what are we providing here at Genius Channel? We provide interactive classes, live classes, uh, website and mobile applications for your resources, free courses wherein we provide daily editorial classes, PDFs and MCQs. Paid courses, UPSC, Civil Service, CDS, NDA, KAS, uh, TNPAC, and remember KAS uh, results are going to come in this uh, week itself. Yeah, so uh, then bank, then SSE, then CLAD, these are the courses that we provide which are paid. We have an integrated prelims and means coaching. And optionals, uh, these are the subjects that we provide, history, Malayalam, public administration, and geography. So. Without waiting for the due, let's get into rod puppetry. So rod puppetry is nothing but an ex extension of glove puppetry. However, it's uh, this is what CCIT tells you, but it's very different from glove puppets because uh, these puppets are much larger and these are uh, mainly manipulated by rods. In the image that I've provided, you can see the rods actually. So there are different rods with which it is manipulated. Where do we find this puppetry form? This is mostly found in West Bengal and Odisha. And uh, rod puppetries have a superior control you know, compared to string puppetry. Let's understand this point. It's not uh, it's not rocket science. What is uh, how do we get a superior control in rod puppetry? So basically, string, string puppets are controlled by strings, and strings are not sturdy enough uh, to control the entire puppet. Whereas rods are sturdy, so you can control uh, the entire puppet according to your wish. So that is why rod puppets are have a superior control. So when you have a superior control, your presentation becomes more enthralling to the audience. So your presentation gives a theatrical experience. So that is what I've mentioned in the next point. So superior control leads to more theatrical experience. That's it. Rod puppetry, uh, how, do, how do rod puppets look like? They mostly have three joints. So let's, let, let me help you understand this. There would be a head, okay, of the puppet, that head would be joined to the neck portion. So that becomes your first joint. Then there are two hands, the two hands would be joined 
again to the neck portion so these are the other two joints so in total there are three joints now the head would be held or supported by a main rod okay and uh, that would be hidden by the costume and the other two rods would be attached to your two hands so by manipulating those two rods attached to your hands the hands of the puppet will start moving so that is how the puppeteer manipulates the actions okay now uh, what are these uh, 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 puppets made of the puppets are actually made of uh, a bamboo base it could be made of wood as well but uh, here mostly what we see is like it is made of a bamboo base which is then covered by hay and rice husk mixture so then that it is molded into a particular required shape let me understand let us understand that these puppets do not have legs and since they do not have legs they are draped in sari or dhoti it depends upon the character so that is how a rod puppet looks like a further understanding of how it works or how it is manipulated we will deal with that when we go into the, the forthcoming slides that is when we go into individual puppetry forms so let's get into the first puppetry form putul nach it's also known as dangar putul it's dangar it's not danger okay so it's dangar putul dang means stick in uh, uh, this part of the country material it's made up of uh, light weighted wood uh, so see handling a rod itself is difficult so you have a light weighted wood so that the entire thing doesn't be too much bulky uh, features what are the features it has three joints as i mentioned earlier it has a head and two hands so all together these head and two hands are attached to the neck portion providing you with three joints head is supp supported by the main rod whereas uh, supplementary rods are uh, support the hands they do not have legs the entire main rod or that supports the head and uh, the puppet itself is attached to the waist of the puppeteer because see you the puppeteer has two hands and with those two hands he would be manipulating the supplementary rods so the main rod would be attached to his waist uh, to, uh, to the to the waist how it how is it attached it is attached uh, to the waist by placing it inside a bamboo shaped cup now that bamboo shaped cup is also known as kar k e r i kar or kern k e r n e kern so known as different names but it's actually a bamboo shaped cup which is attached to the waist of the puppeteer and inside that cup you place the main rod because that is how you support the entire puppet but your two hands will be manipulating the supplementary rods to provide action what is the height of the puppet 1 to 1.5 meters weight is 5 to 15 kilograms very heavy things um, rod height would be 2.5 meters so you can imagine the total height could be around 4 meters right 4 meters a uh, rod is made up of bamboo you can see i provided the images how it's prepared and the finished product also how it looks like is provided in the next image so this is the these are the features of uh, putul nach now uh, gunguru or bell anklets yes uh, which you wore to your ankle on your legs are uh, those are worn on the puppeteer's legs so the puppeteer actually what happens is like he um, manipulates it he manipulates the uh, puppet from below the stage so let's understand this he manipulates it from below the stage now why because you can imagine that the the rod itself the rod itself is placed in a waist um, in his waist in a bamboo shaped cup which we just mentioned right so when it's that mentioned so he the entire puppet is actually on top of his head the entire puppet is on top of his head so he has to be walking below the stage so that the puppet appears on the stage and the audience can have a good view of it okay so that is i hope you are clear with what i try to explain it to you so uh, so like if you compare it with string puppetry and in string puppetry the puppeteer stands behind the stage and uses the strings to manipulate it but here it is like uh, um, you the main rod is placed in inside your waist in that cup and uh, you 
two hands are holding the supplementary rods and you're manipulating it. Along with that, you can walk below that stage, right? The entire stage is for you. You can walk below the stage and uh, uh, the puppet walks on the stage according to your walk. So if you wear a bell anklet or a gunguru, that sound will be contrived as a sound made by the puppet when it is viewed by the audience. I hope this is clear. So when the puppeteer walks, that sound of gunguru would appear as the sound of the, uh, would seem as the sound of the puppet. Okay. The costumes, costumes are from the Jetra traditional theater form of those uh, of West Bengal region. Music and narration are again from the Jatra theater. The instruments used as are khol, which is drum. I provided the images for better understanding. Nagara, a big drum, cymbals, yes. Delivery, where does it, where is it delivered? It's delivered in a Putulgar. Putulgar is the stage which is prepared for uh, showcasing the presentation. It's made up of bamboo and fabric and it can be as high, high as three meters. See, if you imagine you're sitting on the ground and the stage is as high as three meters, so you would have to uh, tilt your head to your back to be actually able to view it. To view what? To view the presentation. But why is it made of uh, made up of a height of three meters? Because see, imagine, uh, see, understand that the entire puppeteer is below the stage. So he has to walk, manipulate the thing. So that is why the stage is, of, uh, is as high as three meters. Okay, so because the puppeteer has to stand below the stage. The stage is closed from three sides, covered by a cloth roof. Uh, there would be a painted backdrop to the uh, stage, and that would be either a palace or a forest or a cremation. It depends upon uh, what scenario is being showcased. The puppeteers manipulate one puppet each. It's heavy, so one puppeteer for one puppet or one puppet has a one has one puppeteer. Basic idea. Um, yes, there would be a high curtain at the front. See, uh, there would be a high curtain which would be placed in front of the stage. So you would think like, sir, if a uh, curtain is placed in front of the stage, how, how is it possible for the audience to view it? Let's understand that this stage is, so this curtain is required because if the curtain is not placed, then the head of the puppeteer, let me be again clear, the head of the puppeteer would be visible. We don't want that head of the puppeteer to be visible. To the audience. So that is why you place a curtain. Uh, it won't cover the entire stage, but it won't cover the entire view of the stage, just, just a head I heard curtain. So the below portion of the puppet or the above portion or the head portion of the puppeteer is not visible to the is not visible to the uh, audience. So that is what it is. The puppeteers can will sing and deliver prose dialogues. They are supported by musicians as well to give that feel. What is depicted here? The depiction is from Ramayana, from Mahabharata, from Radha Krishna stories and uh, Sati Bihula. So Sati Bihula is a very famous, um, uh, a very famous story that is presented in uh, uh, Tamasha also, or in uh, or in uh, uh, or in theater forms also in in parts of UP and Bihar. So. Uh, since this region is close to that, Sati Bula is also shown in Putul Nash. Okay, so these are the things that I wanted to talk, tell you about Putul Nash. Remember these things, um, this head high curtain, what I mentioned, I hope that's clear. If it's not clear, just uh, provide me uh, a comment and I'll uh, explain it further. Okay, so Putul Nash, this is how it looks like. See here, you can find that head high curtain. It's actually below the below this uh, puppet. But when it is below the puppet, it would hide the puppeteer's head from the audience. Okay. So next one is Yampuri. Yampuri, uh, uh, what do you say, uh, uh, a different name, right? Uh, a unique name. We haven't heard such names so far. So this is a rod puppetry form of Jarkhan. It's actually from Jarkhan, right? No, but we call it Bihar because uh, the split happened in the year 2000, right? Uh, but it's actually from Jharkhand. But the material, the material is of, made up of wood. What are the features? It does not have a joint. The puppet is in one piece. 
manipulation, see when the puppet is in one piece, one piece, the manipulation requires greater dexterity. Now what is dexterity? Your, you, have a, you have a dexterity of 10, is what I would say. So dexterity, uh, when I say the dexterity is 10, you, it means you have 10 fingers in your hands, right? So you can move those 10 fingers individually. Right? Individually, you can move those 10 fingers. So that kind of dexterity, greater manipulation of your fingers or uh, flexibility of your fingers is required for manipulation of these puppets because the entire puppet is in one piece. Music, again, classical and folk music. Uh, music is blended from that particular region to give the performance. Um, the play is in Bhojpuri dialect, which is the dialect of Bihar. Um, lot of humor is there as well as morality is there morality is being preached humor is a part of yampuri instruments that are used are harmonium is that dolak is that dolak is a barrel shaped drum i hope you understand that delivery uh, it's done on stage and sometimes the stage is mobile so you can travel along with the stage you don't go to a place you set up a, set up a stage and then you uh, do the presentation, but the stage it's, itself is mobile, so you can take to different places and just start uh, showcasing your puppetry form. So the door like image I have provided here, and the stage is about three feet in height. The puppeteers will sit in a ditch. Now let's understand that the ditch is below the stage. The ditch is below the stage. Why there is a ditch? Because the height is not the height of the stage is not high as three meters that you saw in the previous puppetry form of Putul Naj. Here it is just three feet, but a human being is having more height than that. So these people actually sit inside a ditch, right? And then uh, they make the play. Curtains will act as backdrop. It would keep changing. Musicians would also sit, but not inside the trench. They will sit outside that ditch or the trench, and then they would prepare it. Depictions, there's only one that is depicted and that is nothing but Yampuri. That is the, the story of Yama, the god of death. That is what is presented here. Because you, like, this is, that's why this unique name comes from, okay? The unique name of Yampuri comes from this uh, presentation or the depiction that's usually depicted in this form of puppetry. Because otherwise, in other puppetry forms, you would have seen Puranas, uh, Radha Krishna or uh, Mahabharata or the Ramayana being depicted. So here it's different slightly and it's Yampuri, which is the god of death. Uh, that story is depicted. So there, were, there are other uh, characters here like Chitraguptan. You know Chitragupta or Chitraguptan, which is the record keeper of Yama. Then there is Narada, there are dead people, all these people. So that's, that's what is depicted here. So you can imagine when death and such kind of things are depicted, there would be morality involved and to, to appeal to the audience, there would be humor involved. So uh, next thing, it, uh, these people go to different places like West Bengal and even to Madhya Pradesh to showcase their presentation in different fairs. Why? Very, very simple, the stage is mobile. So you can take it to different faraway places and showcase your presentation. So this is what, so Yama you can see on seated on uh, top of a, uh, bull here and uh, 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 and uh, people as his guards and that is what is being shown here. Next thing, Yampuri, again just an image uh, for your reference. Kathi Kunde Nacho of Odisha, this, as I said in the overview, this is not mentioned explicitly in the CCRT, but uh, I have provided you information regarding that. The rod puppetry form of Odisha, Kathi Kunde Nach, Kathi means stick, stick means rod, Kunde means doll, Nach means dance. So all this come together becomes Kathi Kunde Nach. Material, it's made up of wood and it is painted with colors. Features, there are three joints, but hands are tied to strings. So basically it's a, it's a combination of a rod and a string. The main puppet is controlled by the rod, whereas the hands are controlled by the strings. The head is attached to the rod, I've already uh, Told you that both uh, both are combined in here. The size is roughly 60 centimeters in height. Size of the puppets. Costumes: full-length skirts and shirts. Styled. It, the style is based on Jatra theatre form of Odisha. 
Kathikunde Nach again, what are the instruments used? Drums, cymbals, reed instruments. Reed instruments is like the clarinet and flute, re, um, as well as an harmonium. What's a clarinet? I've shown it in this, uh, in this previous slide, clarinet. This is how it looks like. It's a different form of flute. Music, the music blends uh, folk tunes as well as folk tunes of Odisha, as well as the classical tunes of ODC, the ODC dance form, the classical dance form. Okay, so provided by a group of musicians, it's more of a kind of opera with less verbal content. So if you remember the, uh, the previous uh, puppetry forms, there were a lot of prose dialogues that would be rendered in between the play, right, in between the, uh, in the, in the puppetry uh, presentation but here it's more of opera so you don't have uh, you don't have much verbal contents in it or prose dialogues are very less used and most of the dialogues even if there if there are any they are actually sung okay and not spoken the music uh, starts with a stuti stuti is basically a, a a formal prayer that happens at the beginning of a presentation and then there is a play Comedy is again a fundamental element. See, comedy becomes an element of every, almost every, uh, what do you say, uh, puppetry form. Because comedy is something which will grasp people to the, to their, uh, to the puppetry form, which will make them sit in front of the presentation. So comedy is a fundamental element. You'll find it in, you have already seen it in different forms in my, uh, in my first video as well. Delivery, puppetry is sit on the ground behind the screen and then they manipulate it. Uh, curtains are used for, uh, curtains are painted, used as painted backdrop. What is depicted here? Puranas, Ramayana, Mahabharata, Mahishasura Mardana, that is the tale of, tales of Goddess Durga. Durga, uh, Durga um, killing uh, Mahishasura, uh, which is an Asuran, so a demon. So those things are depicted here. Modern themes are also depicted in Katekunde Naj of Odisha. So these are the things that you need to remember in Katekunde Naj. I hope uh, these things are clear. It's not, it's not uh, complex. You can remember it. I hope it's clear. I'm moving further. So this is what, uh, this is just an image or uh, your understanding. Next, next we go into shadow puppetry. This is a rich variety of uh, rich variety, uh, having a lot of styles. Let's get into the basics of shadow puppetry. So shadow puppetry forms are flat figures. Now you can imagine a putul or a putla or a puppet that we have seen so far. So far that is in rod or string or glove would be a 3D figure. That is it has a height, it has a width, it has a depth. But here it just had a, it, just has a height as shown in the figure on the right it has a height it has a width but it does not have depth because it's not prepared in wood or bamboo or husk or such mixtures no it's prepared from leather and when it's prepared from leather it's so intricate and it's so beautiful you can see right it's so such kind of intricacy is not possible in any other puppetry form because you can't have these kind of designs right so shadow puppetry form what what happens is like this this leather form which is carved out of leather then it is treated to make translucent and then a light source is placed behind this behind this and it is projected onto this leather form so imagine uh, a, a, a light source being placed behind this image and it is projected onto this image so you can find a shadow being created on this side that is on the op that is uh, opposite to the light source you can find a shadow and that shadow is then presented onto a screen so imagine these intricacies it's actually um, hollow as well not hollow in the sense you can see through it right you can see through this with those designs you can see through those designs so those light will fall as per the design on the screen, creating a very, very theatrical and an enthralling experience to the audience. So this is why it's the richest variety. You can find it in India. The puppets are actually stuck to a vertical, vertically to a cane or a bamboo, and then that's moved. See, uh, I need not explain it much because uh, you guys would have seen it. You would, guys would have seen it in 
lot of places. I can give you examples in Malayalam cinemas also. You will find it in certain movies. I think Misha Madhavan was one such movie in, in one of the songs in that movie. This is showcased and uh, in, uh, I think, uh, in Kamala Hassan's movie, one was Dasha Udaram. I think in that there is this famous song of Mugunda Mugunda, which is again uh, showcasing this shadow puppetry form. So you would have seen it in various movies and uh, how it is projected on screen and all. Okay. So shadow puppets are pressed against a screen with a strong source of light behind it, as I already, already told you, explained to you. The screen then forms a barrier between the audience. So the people are actually looking at the screen and the shadow from the leather puppet is projected onto the screen. So the people view that uh, on the screen and uh, that would form. So that projected image is what you see on the right hand side in the uh, image that I have provided. Now, why does it look more dramatic and enchanting as I mentioned here? See, because uh, the stage is normally lit with light in other puppetry forms. It's lit with light. So you see the face of the puppet and you see the color painted on that wood puppet center. But when it comes to shadow puppetry, that is not the case at all. The entire stage as well as the uh, surrounding places where the audience sits, every place is engulfed in darkness. The only light that you see is the light emitting from that light source, which then forms the shadow on the screen. So in the sea of darkness, you see these beautiful creations creating magnificent images, sorry, magnificent shadows on the screen, giving you a very dramatic and enchanting experience. So that is why this is very enchanting, as I said. Okay. Now, shadow puppetry manipulation uh, is by between the light and the screen. So you manipulate the shadow puppet between the light and the screen, giving you various shadows. Okay. And uh, it, see, this this le leathers are also made translucent, and then they are treated with certain colors, so that when the light falls or passes through the, uh, through the leather puppet, it can provide you colorful shadows as well. Again, I would repeat this point. The puppets are treat, treated with different colors. And so what happens is like when the light passes through the puppet, that particular color uh, becomes visible on the screen. So colorful shadows are also possible. And where are these uh, uh, places where it flourished in India, Odisha, Kerala, Andhra Pradesh, I'm sorry, um, it's Odisha, but Odisha, the older name keeps on coming to my, uh, uh, to my mind whenever I type these things. So that is why you see Odisha. Please bear with me, it's Odisha. Okay, Odisha, Kerala, Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka, Maharashtra, and Tamil Nadu. These are the different places of flourishment in India. Outside India, China, Cambodia, Indonesia, Thailand, etc., etc. So China and Southeast Asia, they also have a rich variety of it. If you go and find, if you could go into um, these places, uh, uh, then you can find their uh, puppetry forms. That is this shadow puppetry forms. They are very intricate. They are very beautiful. Not just in India, but out, even outside India, it's very beautiful. It's very intricate. This is one uh, shadow that is being created on the screen. So the white color background that you see here is the screen. And this is the shadow that is projected onto it. See how beautiful it looks. Imagine you're sitting in a very dark room and you're viewing this. It would be a very enchanting experience for you guys. I'm sure about that. So we'll go into the different uh, puppetry forms, shadow puppetry forms of India. First one is Togalu Gombeyata. Togalu, as I said, in the overview, it means leather. So it's Toglu Gombayata of Karnataka. Toglu means leather. Gombayata is a puppetry form. Material, it's made up of leather. Leather comes from the goat skin. Goat skin. Features, it's held by a bamboo rod during the play. And uh, puppets are treated by vegetable and minerals and like to provide the color. Okay, so to provide the color. Let me tell you, it's not colored. It's just tinted with these materials. Why? Because it, see, if it's entirely colored, what happens is like that, then the surface becomes, or the leather surface becomes opaque. And then when you pass on the light, it would provide you a dark shadow or a black shadow. It's not going to provide you a colorful shadow. 
So that is why what they have uh, taken special care is that it is not colored, but it is just tinted with a particular color so that that light passes through that color and that colorful shadow appears on the screen. So you can see different uh, puppets here, right? Uh, blue color, green, green color, different colors. Okay. The puppets are very small in size, 20 to 30 centimeters. People say, people ask, like, so why do we, why are we having smaller size? Because it's after all made up of leather, right? See, because uh, smaller size is enough here. Yeah. Why, why do you require a bigger size puppets in this case? Because anyway, you're not going to show the puppet on to the audience. You're only going to show the shadow of it. Now the shadow can be made bigger or smaller depending upon where you place the light source, right? If you place it closer, it would be a bigger shadow. If you place it far away from the puppet, then it would be a smaller shadow. So remember those things. Uh, puppets are of, now in Togolu Gompeta, puppets are of uh, different size, like 20 to 30 centimeter used in Chika theater and in Doda theater, it is 30 to 120 centimeters. What is Chika? Chika means small in, um, in, in their language and Doda means big. So Chika theater is where smaller puppets are used and Dora theater is where larger puppets are used. According to, this, according to the social status, the puppet size also differs. It's not, it's not uh, difficult to have a different size. As I said, by placing the light source at different uh, places from the uh, puppet, you can have different size in the shadow. Large size is for kings and religious characters like sages. Small size is for common people or servants. Music, regional music of the region of Karnataka. Uh, instruments, madalam. What is madalam? You can see it on the, if, see it for yourself. Symbol, harmonium, delivery. The puppeteers are actually from a tribe and the tribe name is Kilikata tribe of Maharashtra. Even though they are very prominent in Karnataka, but they are actually from a tribe called Kilikata tribe of Maharashtra who have settled in places like Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh, Tamil Nadu two centuries back, at least 200 years back. Okay, so the light source is an oil lamp that was in the olden times, now it's a neon bulb. So when time passes or time changes, things also change. And uh, the shadow is projected on a white screen made up of white cloth. During the performances, people, the puppeteers speak in Kannada language as well as Aray Marathi language. So basically they are from Maharashtra so that Aray Marathi exclamations come as well as they are uh, presenting it in Karnataka so that Kannada, that influence also is there. So Kannada language also is a, a prominent language in the performance. State performances happen inside temples, open grounds, and it's mostly seen in places like Mandya, Bellary, and Mysore regions of Karnataka. Not just Mandya, Bellary, and Mysore region, there are other places as well, but these are the major or the prominent places where such stage performances happen. What is depicted? Depiction is from Ramayana, Mahabharata, and Puranas. By looking at the images itself, you would know, right? The depiction comes from Ramayana, Mahabharata, and Purana. So you can see a depiction for yourself, see how colorful shadows are uh, projected onto the screens. The white background is nothing but the screen. So that's Kogulu Gambetta for you. I hope you understood this. Tolu Bambalata. The next one, Tolu, Tolu Bambalata, Tolu Bambalata, you can call it uh, as you want. A Tolu means leather and uh, it is also, uh, it is the richest and strongest tradition. That is what they say. I'll tell you why uh, later on. And uh, it's it's from the place called Andhra Pradesh. From Andhra Pradesh, uh, this Tolu Bambalata, it's actually made up of leather. The leather could be a goat, buffalo, or deer. Now, see, let me tell you that uh, uh, which leather is it made up of? That depends upon the character. Okay, so that depends upon the character. So, if the character is a god or if the character is a servant, then the material from which it is made up of also differs, okay? Now, which material applies to which character, that's not required for our preparation, so that's why I've not mentioned it. But remember this point, it's, um, I think this point is important, but not uh, the, the combination. 
features they are large in size jointed waist shoulders are there elbows are there knees are there height is up to 180 cm the puppet torso is supported by a stick obviously when it's made up of leather you need something to support it so that was what the case you saw in uh, togolu gombayata as well they are colored in both the sides not just one side both the sides and uh, color and hence when it's colored colored in the sense tinted so they would sh uh, throw colorful shadows on the screen example rama and krishna depicted with blue skin female characters have predominantly orange or yellow skin skin tones okay music classical re classical music of that region has a great influence on it delivery it's headed by a puppeteer group which is which has a number of 5 to 10 that's that's headed by a bhagwatar or sutradhar okay one puppet is managed by one puppeteer at one time puppeteers are versatile that is they do manipulation they will also sing along with it they will recite certain prose along with it and they can also play a an instrument so imagine a puppeteer is so versatile it's not an easy job but let me tell you when they are so versatile and they take so much of pain in presenting a present a uh, puppetry presentation we are actually not giving that due to them right we should recognize their uh, worth their effort and then uh, we should also give due to them that is why i said like it's very important that we revive our culture revive our uh, puppetry forms so remember they are doing manipulation singing reciting and even playing an instrument all this is done by a person so puppets are moved in rhythm with the music and hence provide rhythmic shadows on white screen puppeteers also wear anklets or gunguru as i mentioned in uh, uh, in a previous slide dancing style is very close to kuchipudi which is the dance form of andhra pradesh classical dance form of andhra pradesh stage performance happen normally stage performance happen normally during shivaratri outside the shiva temples comedy skits are also part of it comedy as i said before it's always a part of this to um, to capture the audience attention so comedy is always there depiction ramayana mahabharata and puranas again this is very uh, similar to togolu gombayata and uh, i hope this is clear see how rich it is how rich it is just look at the um, uh, the intricacy of every puppet just look at the intricacy of every puppet that's one thing and not just that you can also see that uh, it's so colorful it's so uh, decorated it's so well decorated now let me tell you one thing i have seen that uh, you can actually buy these puppets so that's why it's uh, see when i started this i'll just take you back to a uh, couple of slides you can see it has a rich and strong tradition that's what i said see how rich it is and you can uh, let me tell you one more thing that you can actually you can actually buy these puppets online for your home decor as part of your home decor you can decorate your home using these puppets you can buy the buy these puppets online i am actually planning it to buy myself uh, because i love this i love it very much when i saw these things it's so good i want to buy it myself but right now i checked it right now they are not delivering due to uh, due to uh, covid situation maybe when the situation eases uh, we are able to we, i will be able to buy it i hope you guys also buy it if you like it next one is ravana chaya uh, most theatrically exciting is ravana chaya of odisha names comes from ravana demon and chaya means it's shadow okay now why does this name come because see let's say uh, the other character when we speak about or when we hear the name ravana the other character automatically that comes to our mind is rama and rama is considered as a god and whereas ravana is considered as a demon now god does not have a shadow that is what the concept is when uh, when when it comes to ravana chaya of odisha god does not have a shadow but in ravana chaya of odisha ravana which is the demon has a shadow so that is why the entire puppetry form is named after the demon which is ravana chaya material the material is made up of leather 
and uh, different uh, materials are used. I mean, skin of different animals are used. Goat, sheep, deer, stag. Again, here uh, the material or the uh, material used depends upon which character you are trying to make. Features: puppets are in one piece, have no joints. Height is 20 to 25 centimeters. They are not colored except black and white. So either they are black or white, but they don't have other other colors. Like you saw in the previous Togolu and Tolu Bombalatas and Togolu Bombayata, you would have seen a colored uh, puppets and thereby showing colored shadows. Here it is opaque shadows, no color. Okay, no color is used. Puppets are centrally held by a bamboo rod. You require greater dexterity. I already meant, explained to you what is dexterity. That is your play of fingers, your manipulation by the fingers. That's very much required here since there are no joints. So when there are no joints, more dexterity. That's how it, you can link it. When there are no joints, more dexterity. Less joints, uh, sorry, when there are no joints, there is more, uh, more dexterity. No joints, more dexterity. More joints, less dexterity. So that is how that uh, relationship is. Puppets are very sensitive and they provide lyrical shadows. Uh, human characters, animal characters, all are there in addition to the trees, mountains, chariots, everything is used. Why? Very simple here. Yeah. Rama, Ramayana, what do you see? You, you'll see trees, you'll see mountains, you'll see chariots, you'll see Pushpaka Viman, all those things. So definitely all these uh, things are there. And you can see how it is <laughs> see how people are holding it see uh, behind the screen how they are holding it and how does the shadow appear everything is shown here in the images music regional music audio language delivery it's delivered on open fields and uh, open spaces during religious festivals there are four puppeteers and four musicians. There would be a Gayak, which is a singer, who would be narrating the episodes of Ramayana in Odia language. Improvised dialogues are also used in between the plays. The puppeteers will manipulate two puppets at a time. So one puppeteer will manipulate two puppets. So even in the image, you can see like one puppeteer is actually manipulating two puppets at the same time. Shadows are projected onto a cotton screen. What is depicted in this basically it's Vichitra Ramayana. So Ravana Chaya by the name itself, you can see what is depicted. It's Ramayana, but they call it Vichitra Ramayana, which is the regional version of Ramayana. Okay, so this is Ravana Chaya for you. It's very good. And uh, with that dark shadows, opaque shadows, it looks very theatrical. So I hope you understood this. Even this is not very difficult. You can easily remember these things. Moving further, so this is how it looks like. Just take a moment to uh, enjoy this, uh, this beautiful uh, Ravana Chaya. Okay, so moving further, we're going to the main portion of it. See, people who are preparing for the defense exams or uh, bank exams or uh, uh, insurance exams may not give much importance to this uh, coming forthcoming slides, uh, at least a couple of slides that is uh, Indian puppetry causes of decline and Indian puppetry steps to revival. Uh, but UPSC students, they have to, uh, particularly who are preparing for mains, they have to uh, go for it. They have to, they have to uh, pay very much importance to this. Even KA students uh, who are preparing for uh, their, who are busy preparing for their mains can have a good look at these slides. Okay, so what are the reasons for decline? Uh, transition from kingdoms to democracies, right? So we as a society have our polity, we have transitioned from kingdoms where kings were ruling to democracies where elected governments are ruling. Now in the olden times it, were the, it was the kings who, who patronized or give, who gave patronage to, the, to these puppetry forms. When it is elected governments, we don't see that patronage coming from the kings and uh, the, the reduction in patronage has been one of the major reasons for decline of Indian puppetry. Then people have switched 
to different other forms of entertainment. So you have modern day, modern day entertainment options, TV, movies, internet, your smartphones, your OTT, your uh, YouTube, uh, your uh, social media, so other different forms of entertainment. So that has actually replaced this traditional form of entertainment. So that is another reason why there is a decline in it. Artisans traveling through different villages showcasing puppetry. See, how do these artisans uh, uh, showcase puppetry? They travel from one village to another village. And now in these times of uh, uh, modern day thinking where you need a uh, solid income, you need a, uh, what do you say, uh, a safe job, uh, these kind of jobs that you travel from one village to another village showcasing uh, uh, puppetry is considered a very low rung job. It's not just a consider a low rug job, low rug job for it, for the for the uh, for the people of the city, but for the people in the villages also they consider it as a low rug job. So people are actually moving out of puppetry. So that is what I was trying to tell you. Next, people are not ready to pay well for the shops. Considering these people, see uh, when some uh, puppeteers or uh, puppetry groups approach you, you don't pay them well because you consider this. This form of entertainment as uh, uh, not well suited for your audience, or you consider these puppeteers as low rug, leading to um, insufficient payments and all. So that is why not, not good payments leads to decline of puppetry form. Government support is also waning. The government support is also reducing year by year because of which uh, uh, these. I, I think these um, this government has come up with certain schemes for. Uh, um, um, reviving the culture and all this pre present government, but on the whole, the government support is waning over the years. Over the years, in the sense, talking from 1950 onwards, and uh, because of what, uh, because of this, the, there is a decline in this puppetry form. People see puppetry only as a form of entertainment, just to have an entertainment. So, if you have to have an entertainment form, then there is TV, then there are new movies. Why do you go for puppetry even in this modern age? So that's the basic mentality of the people. But people, what what people don't understand is that uh, puppetry form can also be used for teaching, social work, counseling, developing mental ability, so many things. This we have covered in the first part of our PPT, uh, sorry, first puppetry uh, video. We had covered that there. So I'm not going to stressing much into it, but teaching, social work, counseling, developing mental abilities of the children, all these things. There are different, uh, there's a whole arena which is, uh, which is a possibility or a potential possibility for uh, developing Indian puppetry, which actually people are not looking for, or people are not interested really. So that interest has to be cultivated. So that is what is leading to the cause of decline. And this, this loss of that inter, uh, loss of that uh, what do you say uh, what do you say that loss in uh, entertainment right so that's just viewing it as entertainment won't uh, lead it lead to its revival but you need to have uh, different other forms like teaching social work you need to experiment right if you need to if you experiment with these puppetry forms then that uh, that that decline can be um, can be reversed, and we can actually see a revival in this puppetry form. So keep uh, remembering these things. Let me tell you, I've, I've already mentioned in my first video, there are a lot of schools which are actually employing puppetry forms to teach children. Particularly, this uh, special special schools, special schools, they are employing puppetries as well as other schools also, normal schools are also employing puppetry forms for development of their children. Okay, which is actually very good. Other schools are welcome to take this forward, thereby we can revive this. We'll see, we'll, we'll, we can hope for the best, I think, right? So with the government, now what happens is another important point is when the government is involved, there is little scope, of, scope for innovation and thereby the interest level keeps falling. What I uh, what I uh, mean by this particular point is, see, when the government is involved, government only uh, projects or uh, government doesn't like to experiment or doesn't like to have innovations in uh, this puppetry. They only stick to the normal themes of Ramayana, Mahabharata and uh, Puranas and all. But what happens is like in the modern age, you need to innovate. 
let's keep it uh, let's go let's keep with ramayana and mahabharata but in addition to that you need to uh, innovate in ramayana and mahabharata as well as you need to innovate in uh, innovate in uh, different modern themes as well so that the interest level if politic for example if political satires political satires are involved depicting the political scenario that you see in today's india that's depicted through puppetry i hope a lot of people uh, will show interest in uh, going to puppetry presentations so that is what i meant by putting in this point what are the steps to revival what can be done to revive this puppetry form government support for that entire ecosystem is required when i mean entire ecosystem or what i mean by that is not just to the puppetry form but to the uh, but to the puppeteers but to the people who are involved in making the puppets but to the people who are involved in making the color for the puppets everything everything every entire ecosystem should be supported by the government with scope of innovation innovation is very much required to uh, inculcate modern themes new themes should be included to suit modern taste and situations stages should be provided in both domestic and international circuits now people don't provide stages yeah you would have heard these things right a uh, lot of movies are made in india but many good movies do not find screens screens are required right for movies to be uh, uh, played so that people can go and watch such movies same is the case here as well puppetry is maybe alive in domestic circuits or even in international circuits but the issue is stages are not provided for their portrayal so that's a very sad uh, scenario but that stages should be provided as a step to revival taste for puppetry should be developed among children in schools at and at home uh, taste for puppetry should be uh, developed i am trying myself uh, to develop this taste for my kid uh, let's see uh, let's see what happens okay puppetry should be experimented as i said it should be experiment to increase its scope for the all round development of children not just children there are many other uh, areas or dimensions where it can be used as a experimental method but we need to expand only then we can see oh, i mean we need to think out of the box we need not set a particular um, what do you say contour for puppetry let's expand the contours let's experiment new things let's bring it let's let's bring new areas new scenarios new dimensions into puppetry let's take puppetry out of this uh, stages and let's take puppetry out of this form of entertainment to different other forms let's increase its scope basically okay only then we can see like only then we can realize that the different areas where it can be applied and uh, the remarkable changes or developments it can bring next thing different art groups should be supported financially government support is required crowd source support is very much important see when where government support falls crowd support is required see we support we as a crowd support a lot of things in our life but we can i urge everybody to uh, i mean the crowd also to support these kind of puppetry forms financially so that it can carry out carry on with this uh, art form corporate shows are also and this is a very good way see corporate shows like see corporates have this uh, uh, their uh, annual days their family meets and all those things right so there this uh, indian puppetry forms can be encouraged so that the children also come to know about these different puppetry forms and they come to know about indian culture and one more thing that i have mentioned is like uh, if you integrate this corporate shows or corporate shows have this csr activities right corporate social responsibility activities so in under this corporate social responsibility activities you can have puppetry included so they can fund these puppets puppeteers or puppetry forms as well as they can uh, use them uh, uh, use these puppetry forms for some of the programs uh, that happens inside their campuses they can also um, uh, what do you say like they can also provide them financial support all these things are possible under csr activities so CS under csr activities puppetry should be promoted that is what i am trying to explain it here so that kind of integration will definitely lead to its revival okay that's what i believe 
integration and exchange program should be there. Integration is like different puppetry forms could be integrated. That's possible. Exchange programs could be possible. Like you exchange, uh, you have exchange programs with different other countries. So the foreign puppetry forms could come into India and showcase them their puppetry here, wherein, wherein that interest level grows. And similarly, our puppetry forms go to that particular country, a foreign country, and showcase there, wherein their uh, interest level increases. Such international recognition can also help in revival of our puppetry form. So these are the things that can be done to, uh, uh, can, can be taken to revive our puppetry forms. Remember the CSR things, uh, I think the, that could uh, um, prove as a very good point in your means answer if such questions are asked. Okay, so in addition to this, if you find any other steps to revival, please do let me know in the comment section uh, if you find any other revival methods. These are the things that I could come up with. Probably you guys also can think, you can also write your own points. So if you come up with your own points, which are different from what I have mentioned it here, please do let me know in the comment section and uh, that would uh, help me in, my, uh, me, uh, in um, increasing my knowledge and uh, the quality of videos and all. So, uh, that is what I wanted to tell you in the steps to revival. I hope this is clear with you guys. Some additional information. This I had promised in the first video that I would provide you some additional information which you have not found in your traditional sources of puppetry which you use for UPSC preparation. So here is some additional sources that I have mentioned. You can pause the video, you can write it down in your notes. I am just going to read it uh, for you, but you can pause the video, you can write it down, you can prepare notes from it, okay? And uh, this slide is not just for UPC, this, this applies equally for every exam. Only the last two slides, that is the causes of decline and the steps of revival would apply to the UPC mains or the KAS people, but uh, this aspirants, but this would apply to every aspirant. So. Kalasurti Bahulia of Maharashtra. It's a wooden string puppetry form. Tarer Putul is a string puppetry form of West Bengal. Putul Nach is a string puppetry form of Assam and Tripura. You have never heard these uh, uh, state names in puppetry. So here I am providing you that. Putul Nach is a string puppetry form of Assam and Tripura. Laithibi Jagoi is a string puppetry form of Manipur. Now tell me guys, have you heard of this puppetry form before in any other source? So here I am providing you that. Laithibi Jago is a string puppetry form of Manipur. Chadar Badar is a string puppetry form of Bihar, but, but it is prevalent among the Santals. I have not mentioned one point here. I forgot to mention it here. I actually read this particular point, I think four to five years back, maybe 2014 or 2015. I don't remember the year exactly, but I read it in the Hindu newspaper that Chadar Badar, puppetry form is a string puppetry form which is prevalent among the Santals of West Bengal. I mentioned that point, but what I've not mentioned it here is this puppetry form is actually played inside wooden boxes. It's not done on stages, but it's done or it is played or portrayed or showcased or presented inside wooden boxes. So remember this point, I've not mentioned it here. Please note it down. Please pause the video and note it down in your a notebook chadar badar is played inside wooden boxes now next one is chamayarche bahulia chamaya chamar is basically this uh, leather and uh, bahulia is the puppet so kalasurti bahulia bahulia of maharashtra bahulia means puppet in their language so chamadiyarche bahulia is uh, leather puppetry form or shadow puppetry form of maharashtra benir putulnach glove puppetry form of west bengal Gulabo Sitabo, uh, there was a movie which was released during the lockdown uh, with this name. Uh, Gulabo Sitabo is uh, a glove puppetry form of Uttar Pradesh. It's actually a glove puppetry form wherein there is a warring two people. Like one, two people are always up on their heels against each other, like your Tom and Jerry, right? Just to remember it, just to uh, feed it in your memory. Uh, just it's similar to your Tom and Jerry. Two people are Gulabo and Sitabo are up against each other. So that's a glove puppetry form of Uttar Pradesh. Modern puppetry icons of India, Dadi Padamji and Meher Contractor. These are the uh, puppetry icons of India. These two people are, uh, they have received numerous awards as well. 
March 21 is World Puppetry Day. Putul Yatra is a puppet festival organized in India to revive the art form. So this can be used as one point in your steps to revival as well. Some of the earliest references we have mentioned or I have mentioned in the first video regarding the earliest reference, references to puppetry in India, wherein I had mentioned about Silapadikaram, Natya Shastra and things like that. I am here by providing you some more references I had promised you there. So I'm providing it, providing it to you here. Some more references. The Sita Benga Caves of Madhya Pradesh, therein evidences are found of puppetry prevalent then. References are also found in Ramayana, Mahabharata, and then there is this Buddhist work called Terigata. In Terigata also references of uh, puppetry are provided. Tiveli and Gimaru inscriptions of Ashoka also refer, refers puppetry as a form to propagate dharma. See, if you remember uh, Ashoka from the ancient India, he had many inscriptions and uh, so, a lot of things were inscribed on that to propagate dharma or dhamma as, as in his language, dhamma. In Sanskrit, we call it dharma. So to propagate dharma, he had used puppetry as a form that is mentioned in Thiveli and Gimaru inscription. So remember these points, very important. Ramayana, Mahabharata, Terigata, evidences in Sita Banga caves of Madhya Pradesh, all these are very, very important. So if you want to note it down, pause the video, note it down. This would be very helpful for your preparation. And that brings to the end of our puppetry series. We had a two series, uh, two video, uh, not two series, two videos in the series. So first was done a couple of weeks back. So here I am providing you with the second part. I hope this would have enhanced your knowledge. This would have helped in your uh, uh, preparation. So please do like the video if you like it please do subscribe the channel please do comment if you have any um, if you like the video or uh, if you want to comment it or if you want if you have any doubts please do comment as well and uh, you can always uh, call and whatsapp at these numbers for your uh, inquiries uh, you have a mobile app we have a mobile application website telegram channel uh, all these things are there so uh, please do watch the video completely don't skip things. So there are a lot of intricate details that I provide in between. So please do note it down if you are a UPSC aspirant. And uh, please do like, subscribe and comment if you feel so. So that brings us to the end of it. I hope you like this video. And if you haven't watched my other videos, that is the puppetry part one or the Raphael video, please go there and watch it as well. And thank you guys. Thank you for supporting us. Thanks a lot.